So you have a house plant and you officially have compacted soil. How do you fix this? Do you need to repot it or should you even repot it? Hello, my name is Ashley and I like to take science and apply it to all things plants. And today's video, we're going to be talking about how to fix compacted soil, if you should, how it happened and everything else in between. In order to understand how compaction takes place, we first need to look at what exactly is going on inside of our potting. So our potting soil is kind of made up of three different components. There is coconut coir or perlite, which is the fine strands or organic material. And then there's these macro chunks we call perlite or pumice, or in some cases, laca if we're doing a DIY system. And then in other cases, we can end up with small particulates of soil or clay, and that just helps with the water holding capacity, maybe some nutrient exchange that's taking place and that sort of thing. So when we look at the macro porosity and those macro items, Items kind of combined with micropores inside, we end up with a porous medium that allows for air exchange, but then some slight moisture retention. This is why things like perlite or pumice does so well in a hydro or semi-hydro setup for our plant. It allows for both air and water to kind of invade the space without disrupting the balance between the two, which is exactly what our plant roots need. However, when we throw in the other two, the peat and the coca choir, or in some cases a little bit of soil, what we end up with is micropores. Now these micropores are incredibly important when it comes to holding nutrients long term. They supply something called cation exchange capacity. These items also help balance out that pH and bring the pH down to a 6.5, which is what our house plants need. This is why when you do do a DIY soil, you always want to add lime to it to help bring that pH into stabilization. If you DIY the soil and you don't do this, technically your plant isn't at an optimal range to uptake nutrients. But because we have those microporosities and they serve the benefit of nutrient and in some cases moisture holding capacity, we do tend to see that over time they compact. Now this is completely normal. We see this not as often in regular soil systems because in regular soil systems we have inorganic materials that actually don't compact because it's kind of like marble stacked up on top of each other. However, in a potting soil system, we see compaction because it's organic. So it's going to degrade over time and those micropores are going to get crushed out. They're gonna get crushed out through the activity of watering. If we water from the top, we're going using gravity combined with water again to smush those pore spaces out. So over time, gravity combined with moisture is just going to slowly whittle away at those. What can end up happening is we can end up with virtually dead spots inside of our soil where the roots aren't able to obtain oxygen and so therefore they kind of just avoid it or they go around it. The other thing we find while plant roots are incredibly strong and can actually break through this pretty darn easily, we just in general have an altered moisture holding capacity. The longer a medium like peach or coconut coir stays dry, the more hydrophobic it becomes. So we want to remedy it as quickly as possible. Now there are the method of just simply repotting this, which in some cases is perfect, but in my case, I don't want to repot this. This plant is kind of in an optimal size container to begin with for me. Uh, combine that with the fact that I'm lazy. <laughs> So I'm going to show you how the heck I'm going to actually repot this and make it work. So one of the first things that you actually want to do when repotting or um, refilling it is break up the actual soil structure as much as possible. Now this guy's pretty dry and it's because it allows me to kind of pull and tug at the plant without um, necessarily ripping anything. But what I wanna do is just give this base a little bit of a massage. Let's just take the time to appreciate how massive that root system is. Holy moly. So you can see here, people are gonna say that this is root bound. It's really not. Um, Santa Vera will do well with more moisture in a smaller container. So if I have bioavailable nutrients at all times in the form of water and I'm keeping the moisture levels up and nice and high, my plant will be happy and healthy. But what I am gonna do is I am going to tease these out just a little bit. 
When we snap roots, we actually end up with more roots. It will cause like a forking in the plant. And this is because we're actually breaking the leading edge of that plant. We like to call it an apical meristem. Okay, so now that I've done that, one thing you wanna analyze on your house plant is if you have a rhizome, um, and that rhizome should always be above ground. Now, on this plant, I don't have to worry about that because I don't have a rhizome. This plant here in particular, I am gonna top dress because you can see I got a lot of root activity on the surface. But if I was to repot like a Monstera, for example, something that has a rhizome that needs to be exposed to the sun and is used to being exposed to the sun, I would actually fill from the bottom. So what I would do is I would put my potting soil into the bottom and I would use a regular potting soil mix with a little bit bit of perlite in the base of the plant and then prop it up this way but in this case I'm going to go from the top down. I have some soil in the bottom which is okay but I know it's still not going to be enough and when I do this I am going to give it a little bit of a push. Now in the case of this plant in particular it is very compacted through here so I'm actually just going to give this a little bit of a lift and now this is important if you're top dressing and I'll, I'll show you what I mean by top dressing here in a little bit. The reason for this is because if I don't tease this soil and kind of break it up a little bit, when I go to add my second layer on top, I will end up with something called a perched water table. That perched water table is going to be kind of where the soil holds moisture before releasing it to that second layer. And that accumulation of moisture, while not always dangerous, can be dangerous. It may result in root rot in some cases. So if we can tease this and break this up, that, that's better. So you can see here, when I pull at this, I can actually pull away at a lot of that root mass. Now, if this was a terracotta pot, I would actually go with a straight vermicast or a compost on top for a top dressing. The reason for that is because the pot itself is going to allow for enough air exchange inside of it. But because this pot is plastic, I am just gonna go for a regular potting soil because I do need the air to still penetrate the actual system. And the only way for that to happen is from the top for the most part, because this entire container is. So the potting soil I'm choosing to use here is dressing soil booster. I showed this in another video. It's kind of an equal mix of a little bit of everything, but it's chunky, which is key when we're talking about filling kind of this plastic container here. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to fill this and as I'm filling, I'm just going to try to get it down those edges. I'm gonna compact it just slightly, and then I am going to water it and compact it a little bit more and see if I get any more uh, compaction. I want a little bit of a lip. I do like a lip on my potting soil because it allows me to give the plant water without <laughs> dumping it all over my floor. Because when I'm in a rush, I do top water for the most part. And so I just kind of want to get it in and get it over with um, as quickly as possible. When it comes to the science of house plants and just indoor gardening in general, please let me know in the comments down below kind of what content you want to see or if there's any concepts I touched on that you wanted a video on in and of itself. Just helps me make my house plants content just a little bit more curated towards you guys keep in mind that I do do a lot of houseplant or I do some houseplant uh, material in the winter time and so I just want to get a vibe for where we're at in houseplant content and what we want to see with that being said I will talk to you guys next time bye